All right. So, anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Jeff Keller. I work for Gecko Software. I work with their track and trade line of products. Also, their new trade miner as well, which is very popular. Uh, if you have any questions for me as we're going through this today, just let me know. Uh, we're going to be going through track and trade live futures. I'm uh, going to go through Tinker, play with some of the different tools, options. Um, if there's something in the program you're curious about, something new, something that uh, you just don't know anything about, if you're brand new to it, let me know. And we'll talk about uh, different sections, different parts. Basically, just go through the nuts and bolts of the program, how it works, how you can use it. Um, and really, write in those questions if you have any, because I like questions. And uh, we can always just spin around on a dime and talk about those different points. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a chart and get started. First things first, if you are brand new to track and trade, watch the educational videos. We've got uh, several videos. They come up as soon as you open up the program. These little guys right here, they're quick two, three minute little clips. Uh, if you already know a section, skip it. If uh, there's something you don't know anything about, watch it. Uh, grab a bag of popcorn, put it in, start watching, and you'll be just fine. Um, but, yeah, you really do want to watch those educational videos if you get a chance. They, they just cut down your learning curve. Every program has one. All right, let's go ahead and close this down, and I'm going to open up the September E-mini S&P. And uh, right now we're opening up uh, just the default settings. I've got on the bulls and bears, volume and open interest is showing. You can see where it started to pick up and uh, really take off once it became the current front month contract. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the different tools. And, again, if you have any questions as I'm going through, just let me know. All right, let's see. What would I like to go over today? I kind of like to uh, wing it a little bit. And right now, I'm actually thinking we might actually just talk about some of the bulls and bears, some of the advantage lines, how you adjust it, fine-tune it, tinker with the program. Um, and unless someone says otherwise, that's what we'll go over. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to our appearance, make sure everyone can see it all right. I know it's harder to see when you're inside of a class, inside of a class, and you want to be able to see the window. Um, let's go ahead and talk about some of the different tools. Right now, we have in the bulls and bears. And right away, I can see that there's actually some fine-tuning and adjusting that I would want to do with it. So I'm thinking I might as well show you what I would do if I really did just open up this chart like I were trading it myself. Uh, right now, I've opened up this market. Bulls and Bears is making us some red buy-sell signals right inside the chart window. And they're not bad. They're actually pretty good. Uh, we caught this signal right here to go long. Uh, it did not change for quite a while after that. Um, however, when you're in the earlier part of the trading, you have the, uh, uh, the <laughs> misfortune of getting uh, buy-sell signals in quick succession when you've got flat, flat price bars and uh, the market doesn't really have a lot of trading or volume or volatility. So, yes, that one signal to go along was great, but at the same time, if you just got those five signals before it, chances are you wouldn't have taken it anyways. Um, and so that's something definitely you want to get cut out of the Bulls and Bears results. Um, however, back here, actually, it's great. Uh, this signal was good uh, to go along. And it was just a single signal, a good $4,800 profit on this E-mini. This signal was good as well, although if you didn't use a trailing stop or move it forward, you could have actually ended up coming out at almost break even in the end. Um, but we move forward, and we see once the volume starts picking up, we start getting uh, open high-low closes with a bigger range. Uh, then all of a sudden we start getting signals that look a little bit more like something you could actually trade. Um, you got a signal here to go short, which is good, although, again, um, if you did not put it in a trailing stop or something to follow along with this trade, you actually, in the end, would have gotten out about break-even. Okay? Um, and this signal right here was good, um, something to go up. Only thing is, we do have that initial uh, retracement right after we get the signal, and chances are you get stopped out there. Um, so uh, there's going to be that there as well. I got a question from Richie. Uh, what's data cost plus software cost? That's an excellent question. For someone other than me, <laughs> I'm more of the computer geek. I'm, uh, I guess you could say, your track and trade mechanic. Um, but you can't see all the pricing for the platform. Uh, what you want to load up, what you want to do. Um, if you go to trackandtrade.com um, and just select futures, it's going to go through all the pricing. Give us a call um, over to an account representative. He can tell you that as well. Um, but I'm, I believe that there actually isn't the data cost if you are a real money trader. If you place in some trades. Um, but, yeah, just track the letter N, trade.com, and I'll write that into the uh, chat. Um, or, actually, even better than that, it's best to go to uh, the link from Paul. I go to his site and then uh, switch over from there um, to get that set up. So, uh, and that is not the right link. There is an N in there. Ignore that first one. Take the second. 
Uh, but that's a good question, and uh, also you learn a little bit more about me. I'm no salesman, <laughs> so when I go through and show you the program, I really am just showing you how it works. I'm not pitching or selling anything um, because I don't like to. It's not my style. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look back over here. Uh, that signal was good, but at the same time, we get a retracement right afterwards. Probably would have got stopped out, um, and then. Actually, we have about the exact same thing happen here. We get a signal to go short, accurate, but at the same time, we have a retracement right afterwards. Long story short, the signals are good, but they're not as good as I want. Um, and so I'm going to adjust and fine-tune it. Uh, the Bulls and Bears is a system that you can go through and very easily fine-tune it. All right? um, and you should. Our defaults are good. All right? We use the same Bulls and Bears default settings across three different markets, stocks, futures, and also Forex. If you open up your Bulls and Bears preferences, down here in the bottom right, this little BNB, okay, you left click on that, and it's going to pull up in all your preferences for the Bulls and Bears. Um, and if you take a look at this, uh, the default for all of them. And it will load up and it will do all right. But I don't want all right. I want fantastic, or as close to fantastic as I can get. So normally what I will do is the second I open up a chart, I will personally fine tune it. And it doesn't take much to do. You've got a sensitivity slider right up here at the top, and it's right here with this little arrow. Now, if you're wondering what the exact point sensitivity for this is, look in the top left of the chart. Okay, Here you have bulls and bears. It's got a traditional formula, and it's got a sensitivity setting of 72. Okay, um, Now, over here on the right side, I grab this little slider, and literally, while I move this back and forth, the arrows in the chart will adjust as I do it. Okay, So you're not going to have to click, apply, click, apply, change one at a time. You can slide this on the screen and actually adjust and fine-tune it yourself. Um, now, if I were looking at this, personally, I would want my signals earlier. Um, even if it means getting uh, signals on a retracement in the middle of the move, I may even take that as well. Um, personally, I don't actually use a traditional formula. Uh, there are three different formulas available for your bulls and bears. You've got traditional, you've got progressive, and aggressive. Uh, just below these three options, we also have some new features that are going to be uh, getting released to everyone pretty quick here. Um, so a little bit of a an inside peek that you're getting uh, because I, you know, I'm using the development pro uh, program and you know the little new tinkering options we're going to have. Um, but anyone that owns the bulls and bears here in a little while, they're going to be able to get uh, the Bollinger bands, Dodge channels, Keltner bands, and 10 by 8 Mac buy sell signals. Okay, uh, we already have these indicators in the software. But uh, currently in uh, the public, it doesn't have buy sell arrows in the chart. What makes this important okay, is that as soon as you have buy sell signals from these tools, you can use them in the autopilot. Okay? And that's obviously very nice. Okay? The autopilot needs buy sell signals in the chart to trade. Anyone that doesn't know what the autopilot is, this is a uh, system where you go through and tell it how to trade. You say, look at the arrows in the chart. Did I make or lose money? Um, and then you click start trading, and it trades for you while you sleep according to whatever you tell it to do. You can tell it to buy market, sell market, how it exits, how it uh, gets back and forth. And um, anyways, that's coming out, a little bit of a tidbit. Uh, so if you open yours up and don't see those, it's because we haven't released it yet. Um, but that aside, we have traditional, we have progressive, and we have aggressive. For my trading style, I usually use progressive, um, especially because I'm more of a, a buy and hold a little bit longer term. Um, as for you know day traders, people that are just bouncing back and forth, getting in and out, or swing traders, they often will use the aggressive. Okay, um, The aggressive, if I'm using that, I normally will actually crank down the sensitivity a little bit. Uh, one thing you'll notice with the aggressive formula, notice that all the price bars are either green or red, and that's it. Um, with the traditional and progressive, it actually color coordinates green, yellow, and red. Yellow being a neutral market, not necessarily a, a strong bullish or bearish direction. Green is always going to be your uh, bullish price bars. Red is going to be your bearish price bars. And the bulls and bears actually will color coordinate your price bars using those parameters. One little tidbit that I'll add in, if I'm using the bulls and bears and it's color coordinating my price bars, and I want to be able to quickly look at a price bar and see if it closed higher or closed lower for that day, I will actually use candles instead. Sure, you can still see them um, if you're using you know, the regular bar style with a little open and close. But this, I find it, it makes it much easier to see right away if it closed higher or lower. If it's hollow, it closed higher than it opened. If it's filled in, it closed lower than it opened. Or uh, they also refer to those as black candles. Um, so um, I normally will turn on candlesticks just so that my price bars will be color coordinated by bulls and bears. But I can actually see if it closed higher or lower just looking at the candle quickly. Okay. Um, 
just a little tidbit there.